It is one of the most important devices ever invented. It converts electrical energy into mechanical energy through the interaction of magnetic fields generated within it. But how is the winding of an electric motor done? In this video, we are going to discover the process of making an electric motor and how it works. The modern electric motor was invented by Michael Faraday in 1821. Its basic design remains the fundamental principle behind most electric motors used today. The British scientists discovered that an electric current could cause a conductor to rotate around a magnet. This basic principle, known as the principle of electromagnetic induction, laid the groundwork for the development of the electric motor. In the early 20th century, electric motors became key components of the Industrial Revolution, used in a wide variety of industrial and commercial applications, from heavy machinery to household appliances and transportation systems. They are known for their high energy efficiency compared to other types of motors like internal combustion engines. This is because they convert electrical energy directly into mechanical energy without the need for combustion. Electric motors are mainly composed of two components, a stationary part called the stator and a rotor that moves within the stator. Magnetic fields are created in the stator using copper wire coils wound around a steel core. These coils are powered by electrical current which creates a stationary magnetic field. The stator has multiple copper coils. When electricity passes through them, a concentrated magnetic field is created that rotates the rotor, generating mechanical energy. The stator is lined with slots, each of which holds a copper coil. The more powerful the motor, the larger the stator and the wider the slots. The rotor consists of a set of copper wire coils mounted on a shaft and can rotate freely. When current is applied to the rotor, a magnetic field is generated around the rotor coils. This magnetic field interacts with the magnetic field of the stator, creating a force that makes the rotor spin. According to the action and reaction principle, the force generated in the rotor causes a rotational movement of the motor shaft. This movement can be harnessed to perform mechanical work, such as driving a fan, a pump, or any other device connected to the motor. The production of an electric motor begins with the stator, a compact press, a steel disc laminated from 100 or more sheets to create the stator core. The machinery lifts the stator core out of the assembly device and transfers it to the next station. The second step is to coat the slots with insulation. Insulating materials are applied between the copper coils to prevent short circuits and ensure proper electrical insulation. This insulation will maintain the voltage in the coils. The coils are made from several copper wires wound by machines. The larger the motor, the more wires per coil in this motor. Each coil has 13 strands of copper wire. An automated system winds copper wire onto a mandrel. Specialized machines are used to wind the copper wire around the stator core slots. This process is carried out precisely and evenly to ensure proper distribution of copper in the coils. This sets the copper windings to fit the core slots. Once all the windings are properly arranged in the threading tool, the technician is ready to transfer them to the stator core. Once the coils are wound and insulated, they are carefully inserted into the stator core slots. The stator is placed on top of the threading tool and a hydraulic device is activated that pushes the wires up through the tool and places them in the stator core slots. The coils are ensured to be correctly positioned and aligned to avoid interference and guarantee efficient motor operation. Workers cover each coil with fiberglass insulation. Fiberglass wedges are inserted to lock the coils within the slots. Once all the coils are inserted and insulated, workers begin preparing the connection. They slide an acrylic insulation sleeve over both ends of each coil. Then these insulated wires are grouped into large power cables. The number of cables varies according to the speed and voltage of the motor. The wires are soldered and then insulated. Some are placed inside the stator and others are left accessible to be connected to a power source when the motors are installed. Using a cord made of heat and chemical resistant polyester, they tie the coils firmly to ensure they do not move when the motor rotates. With the wiring wound and wrapped precisely, this important component of the motor is ready for the finishing touch, a clear varnish. The stator is now dipped in a polyester-based varnish. The varnish makes the stator coil resistant to moisture and improves electrical insulation. Then, 
the stator is placed in an oven for 6 hours at 137 degrees Celsius. The varnish hardens, increasing the stiffness of the stator coil to produce the rotating part of the motor, the rotor. The first step involves preparing the necessary material. High-quality cold-rolled steel is usually used. The material is cut into discs of the appropriate size for the rotor to be manufactured. The steel sheets are stacked on top of each other to form the rotor body. Each sheet may have an insulating coating to reduce energy losses and improve motor efficiency. A steel shaft is prepared to serve as the rotor shaft. The shaft is placed in the center of the stacked sheet and ensured it is correctly aligned. If it is unbalanced, the motor will vibrate, hindering its performance. It is balanced in the same way a mechanic balances car tires, but with 100 times more precision. The steel sheets are welded to the shaft to form a solid, robust structure. This process is carried out using automated welding to ensure a strong, durable bond. Once the rotor body is assembled, an insulating coating is applied to protect it from corrosion and improve its electrical properties. The complete rotor undergoes dynamic balancing tests to ensure it is fully balanced. This is crucial to avoid excessive vibrations during motor operation, which could cause damage. Once the manufacturing process is complete, the rotor undergoes visual inspections and electrical tests to ensure its quality and performance. Next, the stator is placed in the motor housing, ensuring it is properly aligned and supported. The stator is fixed in position using screws. Then the rotor is slowly slid onto the motor shaft and secured in place, taking care not to damage the stator coil. The rotor will rotate on steel bearings. Bearings are installed at the ends of the motor shaft to allow smooth, friction-free rotor movement. These bearings are heated to expand them for easy installation. Then cold air is blown to shrink them and fit them well. The same process is done with the rear cover of the motor. The fan is heated and installed on the rear cover. The fan's function is to cool the motor in operation to prevent overheating and failure. The fan is covered with a safety grill and then a cover is installed on the front of the motor. The stator and rotor coil wires are connected to the corresponding terminals on the outside of the motor. Connections are ensured to be firm and well insulated to prevent short circuits or electrical failures. Once assembled, protective coatings such as special paints or epoxy coatings are applied to help protect the motor against corrosion, moisture, and other external agents that could damage it. The finished motor undergoes several tests to evaluate insulation resistance and performance. It is checked that the motor rotates freely, that the electrical connections are working correctly, and that there are no mechanical problems. These industrial motors are designed to be used in factories to operate machinery such as conveyor belts, pumps, fans, and compressors. Like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel and activate notifications to keep learning.